A massive multinational search is underway for a missing Malaysian Airlines jet. More than 40 planes and nearly 30 ships are involved. We have live team coverage from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, where Flight 370 originated, and from Beijing, the intended destination, before the plane dropped off the radar. We begin with CCTV's Ryan Meltzer in Kuala Lumpur. Ryan, what's the latest on the search and rescue efforts at this hour? Well, the search and rescue operation would just be resuming from the air right now because the sun only came up in the past hour, but it would have continued overnight on the sea. The last report we heard was yesterday afternoon, late afternoon, that Vietnamese crews appeared to have sighted something that looked like it could possibly be part of the airplane, possibly part of a door, but they weren't able to get to the site before sunset to verify that. They will be resuming that check this morning, and we would hope to hear something on that soon. Meanwhile, Malaysian uh, crews have taken samples of oil that was found on the water to try to determine whether that came from a plane. Now, the families of the passengers that, from Malaysia are uh, holed up anxiously in a hotel not far from here. Malaysia Airlines has said once it determines the whereabouts of the plane, as soon as it determines that, it will fly them to the closest possible location, which at this stage would be looking to be somewhere in southern Vietnam. Ryan, what can you tell us about the two passengers on board who reportedly were, were flying with stolen passports? Well, when the story first emerged that uh, people apparently using a stolen Italian and Austrian passport were on this flight, there was a great deal of concern because Beijing did not seem to be an obvious destination for the kinds of people, the people smugglers, the people traffickers, the syndicates that provide stolen passports or forged documents to get asylum seekers out into, from this region, mostly originating from the Middle East, from this region and into the West. But now it emerges that the two passengers had onward bookings. They were merely supposed to transit, appears, through Beijing and fly on to Amsterdam and then to other locations within Europe. This fits much more with the pattern of asylum seekers and therefore somewhat seems to dispel fears that they were involved in any way in bringing the plane down. Meanwhile, Interpol has raised concerns and sort of is, is dismayed, basically, that there was no check made to see that these passports of its database, to see whether these passports were stolen. But it turns out only a handful of countries routinely check its database, which can provide that information within seconds. So this incident appears not only to have shown up a hole in Kuala Lumpur's security, but a hole in global airport security. Ryan Meltzer reporting live from Kuala Lumpur. Thank you. The